We're back out here at a cold and windy big lake. And today we're talking about my method for always picking the right lure for any situation. Stick around, you don't wanna miss this one. Might in. Yeah, I'm in the bush. No, I got a fish, a good fish. Come on, you. I got a good fish. And here is this video's featured comment. Congratulations. If you would like to have a chance to have your comment featured in an upcoming video, all you've got to do is leave a comment. And now, on with the video. Welcome back to Lowbrow Fishing, and it's an exceptionally windy and chilly day here at the Big Lake. Fishing was a real grind. I had to fight for each and every bite that I was able to get today. And that got me thinking, you know, whenever I said we need to be more bass centric and less bait centric, what did I mean by that? Well, we're going to go over some of the reasoning behind that, how my methodology, whenever I'm picking the baits and the lures and the presentations that I'm using, what is my thought process behind it? You know, because we oftentimes we get bait happy, right? We get lure happy and that's not what we want to be. We need to be bass centric. We need to think about the conditions those bass are in, what they're facing and how they're going to set up and the mood that they're going to be in accordingly. Again, this all comes down to bass patterns and bass behavior. You are not going to get around that. You are going to have to study bass patterns and behavior. Doing that is going to it's going to be your number one asset when it comes to picking lures, or whenever it comes to picking baits and presentations, and whenever it comes to locating fish, not just in the wintertime, but all year long. So let's discuss that a little bit. Let's talk about my methodology whenever I'm choosing my baits and presentations that I'm going to work with, especially now in the wintertime. See, I let the situation, I let the conditions dictate what I want to throw. I always try to let that happen. Rarely do I have a preconceived notion in my head saying, oh, this is what I'm going to throw today. Now, in rare instances, I do that if I've got something new I want to try out. I got a shiny new bait and I want to try it out. I want to see how it looks in the water and I want to see if maybe I can catch a fish or two on it. But I'm not going to spend all day fishing that brand new lure, especially if it's not matching the conditions that I'm trying to fish. Case in point, today it was exceptionally windy. It was exceptionally cold, you know, and it was clear as a bell. We had bluebird skies. So we know those are the weather conditions. Well, what were the weather conditions before? Well, they were cloudy and rainy yesterday. So today we've got kind of a post frontal condition in the winter, even though the temperatures did not change that much, I guarantee you the bass can feel it. They can feel it in their swim bladder as that pressure, as that barometric pressure alters and fluctuates. Those bass can feel it. They're a lot more attuned to that than we ever will be. So we know that the bass are probably going to be just a little bit deeper to balance out their swim bladders. They're going to be a little bit more offshore. So that's going to dictate a lot of where we throw. Now, they're not going to be a mile out, okay? When I say they're going to be a little bit offshore, they may be pulled back 10, 15 yards or whatever, just enough for them to feel comfortable. Now, we've got some windy weather. So again, I'm not going to be throwing things like Texas rigs and jigs. Those are not going to be things that are going to be useful to me on a windy day. As much as I like throwing a Texas rig, as much as I like, you know, throwing a good old jig, right? I had one tied on just in case, but I never picked this rod up today. This is not something that I threw around simply because the conditions didn't match that bait. So something like a Texas rig, something like a jig, I rarely throw those on a windy day. Now, what am I going to have in my hand? Well, a jerk bait. A jerk bait is going to be exactly what I'm looking for, you know, as the wind kicks up again. It kind of proves my point. 
this is going to be something that I'm going to be working more on a windy day. If it's a light or a moderate wind and I've got some chops, I will work that bait in between areas, you know, whenever I got a lot of wind. I'm going to be working it more in the backs of pockets, a little bit more secluded coves, where the water is churning somewhat, but it's not going to be, you know, white caps. It's not going to be wavy. That, to me, is when a jerk bait shines the best, from slick calm to some moderate chop and some wind. Now, out in the main lake, whenever we had a good bit of wind, well, I'm going to be fishing something like this. Now, this is one of my modified Cot Cordell Super Spots. You can see I've drilled a hole in the bottom of it, and I filled it with super glue and baking soda. That really limits the amount of rattle that it has. This is a great wintertime bait for me. It still has a tight wobble underwater, but it's not putting out nearly as much vibration. And that helps me during the wintertime when those bass are more lethargic. They're not looking for something that's going to make a lot of noise, a lot of vibration. That's why something like a swim bait can also be a great bait, a soft paddle tail swim bait, you know, something like a Kitek or a raid swimmer. Those work great offshore, especially, you know, if you're closer to the bank, they can also work, but you have to be mindful of the vegetation. If you've got a lot of vegetation in your lake, if you don't have so much vegetation, but you do have things like lay downs and you do have timber, you know, you've got some rock piles, some riprap. Again, you've got to be mindful of what's around you. But a swim bait can still be a great presentation whenever you've got some moderate, even some heavier, gusty wind. And another bait that I'm going to be reaching for, especially if I've got some steeper bank that I can work down, or if I've got some structure that I can work it through, and that's going to be a square bill. Now, I like this darker square bill in the wintertime. Sure, it can be worked well in the summer, but during the winter time, I find that this darker color actually works a little bit better for me. I don't know if it's something that the bass go through, if it's something that changes how they see the water, if the coldness of the water, I don't know. But my own personal experience is this darker color tends to do a little bit better in the winter time. Um, in the summertime, it can do just fine under the right conditions, but I can fish this on a bluebird sky and still get plenty of bites. Now, another type of bait, if it's going to be very windy out, it's going to be very cold out, it's going to be this guy here, a good old chatterbait. Now, this is just a regular Z-Man chatterbait. These things are $5 at Walmart. You can get them right off of the shelf. You know, you guys know that I like to use a fluke style or non-kicking style of trailer with them. And that little bit of flash, right? That little bit of flash on a cold, windy day, whenever we've got some cloud cover, or whenever we've got some bluebird skies, right? So from moderately cloudy all the way up into bluebird skies, this will work great on a windy day. A spinner bait, something like a spinner bait, will work well too, but you've got to match the blades up with the type of conditions that you're in. If you've got bluebird skies, I'm going double willow leaves. Now, usually I'll go gold, but you can get away with silver too. Now, if you've got a lot of wind and you've got a lot of cloud cover, then I'm going something with maybe a willow leaf and a Colorado blade, you know, something that's going to have just a little bit more thump. And I'll be going with a noisier, loud, you know, that chartreuse green booyah spinnerbait you guys have seen me use. That's what I'll be working then. But as the conditions change, as those temperatures change, that's what we need to be thinking. You know, something like, well, lowbrow, we've heard you say, fish the west north side of the lake in the morning, the side that's going to get the early sun, the side that's going to keep sun all day. Well, what about in the afternoon as the sun comes by? Well, as that other bank, as the eastern bank starts to fall into the sun, that water will warm up. And again, you can find some spots along there as it has a chance to warm up. You can find some spots along there that can be really productive. So, be mindful again, as I've said before, conditions change throughout the day and you need to be ready for that. You can't, you can't sit back and say, this is what I've got to fish. You've always got to be ready. You've always got to be able to adapt. So bear that in mind, right? The reason why we're choosing the baits that we're choosing, the reason why we're fishing the way that we're fishing is because of the conditions and 
how we feel those bass are going to respond to those conditions. Now, it took me years and a lot of hours on the lake, tens of thousands of hours or more on lakes fishing for bass. That's what taught me what I learned over the years. You know, as I was a kid watching Jimmy Houston and Roland Martin and Bill Dance and Rail Breckenridge and all the greats watching them on TV, I picked up little tidbits here and there. But today, it's like YouTube. And we've got a lot of guys who are focused on watching YouTube. And I hear it every single video. Lowbrow, just shut up and tell me what bait to throw. That's all they care about. Shut up and tell me what bait to throw. And I'm telling you, it's more complicated than that. And if you actually want to be good at fishing, if you actually want to be productive when you're going out on the water, and you actually want to consistently catch fish and be able to predict how and when those fish are going to react, You've got to focus on bass patterns and behavior. And that's what I'm talking about here today. So if you can choose the method, right? If you can match the method up with the conditions, if you can base the lures that you're going to use, the presentations that you're going to use, if you can base those around what's happening all around you, you know, on that day and evolve it as the day goes on, well, you will have much more success each and every time you go out on the water. And then you'll get confidence because success breeds confidence. And you'll be able to put those things together. You'll say, well, Lowbrow doesn't fish a jig on a windy day. And why doesn't Lowbrow fish a jig on a windy day? Well, because I don't get bit. It's that simple. There's something about those bass are just not keen. In my area and in a lot of areas that I fished, you know, they're not really keen on a jig or a Texas rig whenever we've got a good bit of wind. Now, I would love to fish a jig and a Texas rig all the time, but I have to adapt. So whenever we've got wind, whenever we've got, you know, cloudless skies, and whenever we've got some cold like we had today, I had to change it up. I went to different types of presentations, and that's what worked for me. Now, is it going to be 50 fish day? Probably not. You are going to have to fight sometimes. That's just how it is. You're going to have to fight. It's going to be a slog. It's going to be grueling out there some days. A rough day out here in the big lake where I have to fight for it, you know, grind all day just to get a few bites. Well, the same day on your body of water may be a bonanza. You may get 25, 30 fish or more, you know. But the reason why that happens is, is because the conditions the factors that are surrounding those bass and the mood those bass are in. So don't ever forget the bass. Put the bass first whenever you're thinking about how you're going to fish, and I promise you, you'll never be disappointed. So there you have it. My reasoning and methodology for picking the baits that I do when I do. If you're having a hard time getting bites consistently, well, think about the bass first. As I say, become bass-centric not bait centric. A lot of times we can get happy about baits. We think that there's going to be a magic bait, a magic bean that's going to somehow work for us and cause those bass to bite. That's not how it works. You're going to have to put in the effort. But once you do, and it's not as bad as you think it is because, hey, you get to go fishing. And once you do that, you put those pieces together, you'll find that you're catching bass more and more and confidence leads to more success. Thanks for watching Lowbrow Fishing. We'll catch you in the next one.